Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. There I am again. Well, how is you? How is you? How are you all? Oh, g'day, curd nerds. Um, welcome to another show. Uh, glad to have you all on board with me. It looks like I've got 58 people watching, which is a bit of a record for this time of the morning, that's for sure. Um, and hoping that you can all hear me okay. Um, lots of uh, g'days to start with. We've got Anna, first one, Riker, Helen, Sharon, Zignitz, Paul, Spartan, Mexico. Um, oh, wrapped. Oh, I can't read. Reaper. Oh, looks good. Josh, Dwayne, Kieran, Jordan, Brian, Dwayne again. Uh, Paul, John, Kieran, Larry, Dominique, Craig, Colleen, Tregan, Jolson. My goodness, the list goes on, doesn't it? I haven't finished. Where am I up to? Oh, I've lost my place this early. Uh, Brian, uh, Jason, Steve, Deep South Texas. Uh, okay, that'll do. That's a good start anyway. Um, just a few housekeepings this morning. Big shout out to a new patron uh, who goes by the name of Juan. That's it, just Juan. Juan, you know who you are. Um, thank you so much for your kind um, pledge on a monthly basis. Uh, cheeses this week uh, will be a mystery cheese. Those who are patrons and members uh, already have had a sneak peek of the mystery cheese. Um, it's one that I made by mistake, but uh, I have full disclosure on the recipe and everything. So it's a very uh, delicious little cheese, but uh, you'll see that um, Friday morning my time, Thursday... Thursday morning, oh, I can't remember. Thursday morning in the US and whatever other times everywhere else. Um, and finally, just don't forget, there's a super chat button down there. If anybody wanted to throw some money to me during the show and ask a question and go to the top of the list, because the chat looks pretty busy. Um, I don't know if I'll uh, uh, get to everybody's question today, but we'll give it a good try. And as you can see, we've also got a special guest. She's hiding behind there. There's Holly the cheese dog. So she's uh, having a bit of a nap. So if she wakes up and starts licking bits that she's not supposed to, don't worry about it at all. Okay, um, let's get to the first question, if I can find it. Uh, Zignit says, what do you think the most diverse difference, what is the most diverse difference between cheeses? Uh... The thing that changes the flavour the most would be the starter culture, definitely. Uh, yeah, that, that it, that's it. The difference between a mesophilic and a thermophilic are poles apart um, when it comes down to making two cheeses exactly the same and putting in different starter cultures. They do taste a lot, lot different. So that's the thing that makes them the most diverse. Um, people are asking if I feel better. Yes, I do. Um, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag, what's going on. I, um, recently diagnosed with sleep apnea. Um, so not getting as much rest as I could be. Uh, it's listed in the, uh, in the chronic category. Uh, and they, from the recent sleep study I had done, they said that I, st I have low oxygen levels 34 times an hour. So they I'm going in for another sleep study to have one of those lovely um, CPAP machines fitted next week. So um, there, there will still be a show, so don't worry about that. Um, I'll just be getting a lot better sleep and uh, feel a lot better in the morning. Um that's happened due to a result of the headaches, unfortunately, a, a side effect. The medication I was on for headaches caused me to um, have an increased appetite. I put on weight, 
and I'm, because of that, I've got sleep apnea, unfortunately. But anyway, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I will get over it. I'm starting to exercise again um, because the headaches are letting me do that. And uh, we'll get on with the show and get on to it. Um, next question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dominique says, uh, hey, Gavin, how are we looking like for a video for Reblichon making? Uh, it's on the list, Dominique. We'll get there. Uh, but, uh, yep, I like all good things, cheesy. Uh, uh, patience is a virtue. Uh -huh. uh, Jordan says, you seem to be using pasteurised, not homogenised whole milk a lot. Can you use regular uh, whole milk for your cheese recipes? Yes, indeed, you can. Um, as long as you still add the calcium chloride that I add for any heat-treated milk, you should be fine. You'll get a little bit of a weaker curd set with homogenized milk because the flat, the fat, flat, the fat glot globules are a lot smaller. They're broken up by a micro mesh filter. The milk's pass through that, um, and that stops the cream rising to the top of the milk, um, and it does uh, inhibit the uh, the curd setting process a little bit. But you'll still be able to make cheese. Um, I've certainly got away with it in the early days. That's all I used because I didn't know any better and there was no unhomogenized um, cheese on the market. Brian asked for an Emmentaler. Uh, we already have one. There's a video there somewhere. Um, and if uh, Kim can pop the link in, there should be a video for Emmentaler. Um, Steve says he's stringing up curd harps as he listens to me. That's fantastic. Well done, Steve. Um, seems like business is booming. Um, Craig, made two cheddars for the cave over the weekend. Can't wait. Fantastic. Uh, what is it? Uh, Gavin, is there any way you can make parmesan cheese? Richard, I've got two parmesan videos. That's how good I am. Um, so uh, if Kim can find the link to the second most recent parmesan video, that would be fantastic. Um Okay, uh, where are we getting to? Oh, way past. There's so many questions. Have I ever made Sardinia maggot cheese? No, not going to either. Uh, Reaper works. What's my call sign? Oh, get a thing. Well, there you go, Reaper. I got it close. Rapunzel says, Hi, Gavin. I'm a huge fan. My husband, my dogs, and I love your videos. Thank you very much, Rapunzel. Oh, am I blurry? Oh, yeah, there we go. Maybe I thought it was just me for a second. That's better. Let's figure it out. Okay. Um, all must die. You're an awesome man. Thank you very much. Uh, Kevin, Gavin, made a fontina and follow the recipe exactly. After about two weeks at 95%, the skin is starting to slip off. Oh, that's no good. Why? Mm. Maybe lower the humidity. That's usually the reason for skin slip like that. Um, so try that. Uh, so if the skin does slip off, all you have to do is then let it dry out again. And um, I'll get a bit closer. There we go. Um, let it uh, dry out again and then form a second rind and then go from there. Um. Uh, that kid says, what's your favourite type of cheese and why? I don't have a favourite. They're all favourite. All the new, everything. All the new ones, all the old ones, they're all good. Um, all must die. Where did you learn to make cheese? Uh, where? Oh, I went on a cheese making course uh, and two old ladies taught me how to make feta and that was the first cheese ever made and it was amazing and I went from there. So that was really cool. Um and haven't stopped making it since. Wendy says, I made a Jarlsberg, but left it in the brine for 21 hours. What will happen? It will be very salty, <laughs> stating the obvious, I suppose. And ooh, what else will happen? It may inhibit some of the propionic shamani uh, activity. So you may not get CO2 development like you we, we would normally see. Uh, Jeffrey says, g'day. 
Um, Anna says, what's my favourite cheese to make? Um, favorite, I like making pasta filata cheeses, even though they've been a bit of ne my nemesis in the past. Um, pasta filata cheeses are a lot of fun to make. That's the stretchy curd ones, you know, like Oaxaca and mozzarella, um, provolone, and recently the cacio cavallo that you would have seen in last weekend's video, which was good fun. Um, Jeffrey said, I'll feel better. Thank you, mate. Uh, Kevin says he's been using CPAP for four years. It will change your life forever in a good way. Fantastic. And Jeffrey says he's got sleep apnea as well. Um, well, the world certainly is a, um, a small place. I certainly didn't think I was alone, and I have actually discovered so many people do have uh, that condition. Um, and I, I certainly don't feel alone. I know that I'm going to get better with a bit of sleep and some oxygen to my brain. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I'd be able to um, help you guys more, that's for sure. Um Chris says, Gavin, I bought the Mesophilic MO30 from you, but have no clue on how much I should use. How do you calculate how much to use? Okay. Now, trick with the MO30 is made by Sacco. Now, Sacco is an Italian company, and they're very obviously very uh, tight with their culture amounts because they're very, very strong cultures. So with the, um, uh, the Sacco-type cultures, you use a little, um, up to a, a maximum of about an eighth of a teaspoon per 10 litres. Um, you could even use an eighth of a teaspoon up to about 14 litres, so, uh, and that would work perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so that's how much I would add, Chris. Uh, even if my recipe say quarter of a teaspoon, stick to an eighth, you'll be fine. That's what I use. Okay. Um, a... Agar says, pay for some private scanning. I already have. It's all done. All that good stuff. Frank said, oh no, where have we got? Colleen, calf lipase. Just would like to know if this can be used with any cheese. Um, is it made to make the cheese taste unpasteurized? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, what lipase does, it uh, performs uh, something called lipolysis, which basically means it breaks down the fats in the cheese to give it a different flavour. So um, that's what it'll do. It'll give you a pecant flavour in any cheese you add it to. There are different strengths. So there's mild, which is calf lipase. Uh, there is strong, which is either kid or lamb lipase. Um, and they are very strong. Uh, they will add a, a, a big boost to your cheese, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, Frank says, CPAP changed his life. Years of lack of sleep for myself and my poor wife solved. Um, takes a while to get used to. Yeah, I'm willing to ride that train until it all happens. Um, but thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. Thomas, what made me get into cheese? Good question. Um, I wanted to know what was going into my food at the time. Um, Kim and I started a, uh, not a self-sufficient lifestyle, but a, a more sustainable one, more friendlier footprint on the planet. And we decided to start growing our own food. And we got our own chickens for eggs. Uh, and uh, cheese was kind of the next logical step. So I decided to get some local milk and, uh, and make some cheese. And... Pfft, it's just become a hobby. I just can't stop making it. It's amazing. Um, so there's the, there's the answer to that one, Thomas. Um, Grant says, uh, did you... Uh, no. Did you manage to find a recipe for Danish blue? I actually have something that may be similar. I did find a recipe, Grant. Um, but uh, that will be coming soon. Um, I've got to free up a ripening box. So I can put it in there. Uh, and Kim's put the um, how to make pecorino, pecorino Romano using raw milk. Did somebody ask for that? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I've missed a whole bunch of questions. That's why. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, my goodness. Um, where the heck am I? Oh, I'm so far behind. I'm minutes, hours. Um 
Where the heck am I? Right, there we go. Um, Grant's, <coughs> excuse me, losing my voice. Need a coffee. <coughs> um, Grant says, what solution do you use to wash off any mould? Uh, a simple brine solution. Basically, that's just a cup of cool boiled water. And to that, you add two teaspoons of salt. Um, and then you just dissolve that, make sure it's dissolved. And then you use a soft cloth, dip it in the brine, and you wipe it all over. And Bob's your uncle. Um, Rapunzel says, I've been diagnosed with chronic fatigue and sleep disorder also. I have not been asleep. It is so awful. You'll get through it. Thanks. Ethan says, how long have you been making cheese for? Why did you decide to get into cheese making? I think I've answered half of that. Um, uh, so how long? Uh, first cheese I made was in 2009, so I've been making it for nine years. Spartan says, did I get a haircut? Yeah, it's pretty cool, don't you think? It's a number one. It's only because I have to go for the second sleep study, and last time they put these probes all over my head and they put this conductive gel stuff and it I couldn't get out of my hair for about a week. So I thought if I go short, then uh, I won't have any issues. Okay. Uh, Fat Lath says, good on you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dwayne, um, how important is it to have a dedicated cheese cave? Um, well, if you're just starting off, then no, there's not that many issues with not having a cheese cave because I highly recommend basic um, fresh cheeses, things like um, ricotta, paneer, halloumi, feta, uh, bell paese with the next semi-hard I go on to. So there's four cheeses you don't need a cheese fridge for. Um, and yeah, then if you're going to go to the next step uh, and you can't find a climate-controlled area in your house like your basement that's cool around 13 degrees celsius or what's that 55 fahrenheit then you'll probably have to um, um get a a dedicated cheese fridge amy says i'm making pepper jack tomorrow can't wait to try it any advice for a first timer yeah don't put as much chili as i did when i made mine um we had a piece at a friend's place um on the weekend and my goodness, it's still got that kick. Oh, I was sweating as soon as I ate some. It was crazy. Um, yeah, so um, go under. Get the flavour of the cheese, not the chilli. Grant says, is there any way you can stop blue mould passing into other cheeses without vacuum packing or waxing? Um, yeah, maturation boxes. Have the separate cheeses in separate maturation boxes and don't open them close to each other. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, that's the best way I find anyway. Um, uh, Aston Moose says, would you consider making Icelandic Skyr? I think that's how you pronounce it. I have heard of that cheese, but don't know how to make it. I'll put that down. It's technically cheese. I heard it's something like yogurt, but thicker. Um... Aga says, is there something medical and you don't want to go pay for a private... I've already done the tests. Yes, but thank you. Um, Steve says, I made Parmesan today. I need to replace the Parmesan I made last year. It was amazing. Do you use Helvetica's culture in your Parmesan? I used it along with Lipase, incredible flavour. Uh, yeah, so the um, MOT92 has uh, Streptococcus thermophilus. It also has uh, lactic bacterial subspecies lactose. It also has um, Helveticus and the other one. Oh, I can't remember the other thermophilic culture, but it's in there. So it's a, it's a multi-breed sort of um, four cultures and they're all thermophilic. And that's the one I use for Parmesan. And when you do add lipase, yeah, it's it does have an amazing flavour, Steve. Totally agree. Rick Sanchez. Oh, good to see uh, Rickety Rick there. Um, is there any way to make cheese without the worry of blue mould forming? I'm allergic to penicillin. Um, yeah, so make your cheese. Uh, make it semi-hard or hard um, and vacuum pack it as soon as it's touch dry. 
or wax. Uh, wax is uh, probably the, the more natural way to do it, micro crystal and wax, um, and it's more flexible uh, in case your cheese decides to puff up or what have you. Um, vacuum packing is not as sustainable as what waxing is, obviously. Okay, Grant says, do I have to use uh, add calcium chloride when using raw milk? Usually not, but it depends on the lactation cycle of the animal. Uh, when the lactation cycle is near the end, uh, it's best to use calcium chloride because um, not as much calcium is produced in the milk, if I remember rightly from the uh, cheese chemistry book I read. Um, and therefore, they won't bond to the rennet, uh, to the um, chymosin as well. So you'll need to add some calcium chloride to put a bit more soluble calcium back into the milk. Uh, but the start of the lactation cycle, no problems. There's heaps of fat, calcium, all the goodies there. Um, Jason said, thanks for the compliment on my 16-month-old cheddar. Can't wait to make several more. Uh, it is. It is truly amazing stuff. And the older you leave that cheddar, that recipe that I use, the, the better off it is. It really does taste amazing. Um, Sean says, amazing. Okay, just, just a new subscribe for the past week. And I'll be honest with you, I was so impressed to make cheese here in the Philippines. So if I may ask... Which cheese is too easy to make? Good question. Uh, well, the obvious few that I mentioned before, which is ricotta, paneer, halloumi. Uh, you'll need some rennet for that. Um, cream cheese is a good one. You'll need a culture, starter culture for that, or you can use buttermilk. Um, there's some easy ones that'll impress your friends straight up, I'll tell you. Um, so they're nice and simple ones. Give them a go. Make sure that you understand what you're doing before you move on to, say, semi-hard, hard, or even mold-ripened cheeses because you, sometimes people jump in with both feet and sink <laughs> to the bottom, especially if they're trying to make a camembert as their first cheese. I know a lot of people have been successful in doing that, but really it's a fluke because if you don't know how milk sets and timings and how long you should stir things for and why you need to stir things longer and that sort of thing, um, you're really going to get in the deep end really quickly. Um, but yeah, so try some of those cheeses, Sean. Brenda says, hello, was watching your video about making traditional mozzarella. What happens if you don't have lipase but have everything else? Does it make a difference? Thank you. It does make a little bit of a difference to the flavour. Remembering that mozzarella, you eat it straight away. So it's a fresh cheese, really. It's not stored uh, to develop any flavours. You can leave it out, definitely. Uh, if you have access to raw milk, you'll get a better flavour profile anyway because naturally it has higher levels of lipase in it than heat-treated milk. So there you go. Um, hope that works for you, Brenda Joy. Um, YouTube Mirror, my goodness. You should try and make a cheese as they would have made in the primitive days 10,000 years ago, just for fun. Maybe make a historical information video. That's actually on the cards. I was going to do the origins of cheese as um, maybe a two-part or a three-part series. Maybe difficult to do, but um, I've got to do a lot of research for it. And I don't have a lot of free time at the moment because the um, the... Uh, online store is um, hot the trot. We're getting uh, a lot of orders in, which is fantastic, just in time for Christmas. Um, and even though some people don't, you know, it's November and people aren't even thinking about Christmas yet, but obviously a lot of people here in Australia are and we're getting run off our feet. So uh, I will have to leave that series until early in the new year when we've got some, um, some time free and it all settles down a little bit maybe and when I'm on holidays. So I'm going to try and do a, a nice narrative piece on um, the history of cheese or the origins of cheese. Won't go into the history too much. Um, Thomas says, uh, what made you want to get into cheese making? I oh, already did that. Oh, did a few of these. <laughs> uh, my goodness, I've just lost it again. The, uh, and the reason I keep losing my place is because when you roll down on the feed, it skips about seven 
of your responses. Um, uh, Brizzy Girl says, hopefully the CPAP will help with your headaches, Gav. I know they help with my, it helped with my migraines. Yeah, the, um, the sleep specialist doctor said it may help lessen headaches, which would be good too. So they could be, could be all, I could have had sleep apnea before I had the headaches and although they didn't appear, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Um, Kevin says, your doggy is so relaxed. Um, looks like a little angel. She is. She's lovely. I don't know what she's doing at the moment. She's just sleeping. <laughs> um, Aga, give Rye Ghost Giost a try. Not my taste, but the Vikings love it. Righto. All these Viking cheeses. I'll have to find the recipe. The only problem with the suggestions, and I really do appreciate the ones you give me week after week, is finding recipes. Um, a lot of the cheese forums that I go on, uh, the YouTube ones, the people don't really have that many recipes. They're always asking me questions. And uh, not that that's a bad thing, of course, but uh, trying to find a recipe for a obscure cheese um, where it's only eaten by a small, small amount of the population is difficult to find. Especially some of these cheeses are only made in one factory in the world or one artisan cheesemaker makes them anymore, so... Trying to get the recipe out of their um, out of their hands is is difficult. Um, Pia says hello from Chile. Just joined the online course at Little Green Workshops, and thank you so much, Pia. Really appreciate um, you joining and jumping on the course. If you've got any questions, of course, of course, <laughs> on the course, don't hesitate to ask them in a comment, or uh, you know how to email me directly anyway. So that's cool. Um, and the course is going strong. There are lots of people joining it all the time, which is great news for anybody who was interested in how um, the uh, Curd Nerd Academy course was going. Um, so a lot of interest, which is fantastic, all throughout the world. Ken says, oh, hello, Ken from the UK. Um, when making cloth-bound cheddar, do you let it dry a bit or add the cloth immediately? Um, I actually let it, well, when I did it, I let it touch dry. Um, because too much moisture kind of won't stick. So let it air dry for two to three days uh, until you actually see the rind start to form. You'll see it change colour a little bit, Ken. And that's when I whack the, the cloth on. Just one thing, I would never use coconut oil again. It actually really did attract too much mould. So if you use lard, uh, which is pig fat, or butter, then those two are really acceptable because when you put the butter on the, the cloth, when you put it into the cheese cave, it goes solid at 13 degrees, so it's no big deal. It won't go soft or anything like that. Uh, Lachlan says, Hi, Gavin. Are there any cheeses you recommend for beginners to make? I've done that a few times this episode, but uh, oh, here we go. We'll do it again. <laughs> Ricotta, paneer, uh uh, make halloumi, feta, maybe bel paese. There you go. There's five good ones. And then if you're feeling really adventurous, try quick mozzarella, but sometimes it's prone to failure. Uh, I find traditional mozzarella a lot easier to make, uh, but a lot longer to make. Um, in fact, I've got a pretty foolproof um, uh, pasta filata recipe now, so I'm not too fussed. Um, try Oaxaca. That was cool. That was good fun too. Uh, nice pasta filata cheese to try. Um, Rye Ghost is pronounced approximately as Kruh, Kruh, and then Oast. Kruh Oast. Oh, okay. Send an e sent you an email about it. Thank you, Aga. Um, appreciate it. Uh, I think you did. I can't remember. I got so many emails. Wendy says, I have used vac packing and just started to use wax. My next experiment is to do doing fine cheeses what are the best what cheeses are best andrew do i do it what is that autocorrect something not working there wendy um <laughs> what cheeses are best i no, don't understand and i don't find, understand fine cheeses either <laughs> have another go at that um julie says hi gavin i'm making uh, cheddar curds right now. What happens 
if I heated from 86 to 92. Hang on, I'll have to ask Siri. Convert not. Oh, thanks, Siri. Uh, convert 92 Fahrenheit to Celsius. That would be 33.3 degrees Celsius. Yep, that would be fine. So 33.3, the mesophilic starter culture will still uh, be alive. It usually peaks out about 38, 39. It dies off. So you've got some good culture activity and need that because during the cheddaring process, not only does it expel whey, that's part of the process, and it keeps the slab warm. Um, what also happens is you get more lactic conversion. So you get more lactose converted into lactic acid. So, uh, yeah, you haven't killed it off. That's cool. Good temperature. You'll expel a bit more weight. It may be a bit crumbly in the final cheese. But anyway, hopefully that works for you, Julie. Paul says, my cheddar blue is five weeks to age. It has some brown and white Mold on top taking over the blue and is shrinking uh, some some just like a brie. Should I eat it now or scrape it off? Um, I think the blue development would have already happened, so that's probably happened already. Um, yeah, I would. I'd scrape off what's there and uh, give it a go, see what it tastes like. Um it's pretty hit and miss. Well, it's not hit and miss. It was fairly good when I did it. The blue stayed there and no other moulds attacked it. Um, I made sure that once the blue had taken over that I reduced the humidity. I took out, I had a little cloth underneath the mat that was moist. So I took that out of the ripening box to lower the humidity a little bit. That way, white brown moulds didn't take over and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, give that a go anyway, Paul. Scrape it off, taste it. I bet it tastes amazing. Uh, Matt says, best cheese for cheese on toast. Well, cheddar, of course. Um, and then Swiss, I would think. Uh, Gruyere, that's very nice too. In fact, uh, Emmental's nice as well. Uh, let me think. Piora, that's lovely on toast. Um, oh, uh, raclette, fantastic. Melted with anything. There you go. There's a few suggestions. Um, Grant says, what other cheeses can I make that I can vacuum pack? Oh, lots. Um, so lots of cheeses. Um, sorry, I got a little bit distracted. There was a phone call on my phone and I don't know what the heck was going on. Um, and it showed up on my screen. Uh, what other cheese is going to make that a vacuum pack? I don't know what other cheeses you've made, Grant. That's the problem. How can I suggest what you should make if I don't know the other cheeses? Um, all the semi-hard and hard cheeses you can vacuum pack. Um, Brenda Joy says, so what you're saying is I can leave out the lipase in making mozzarella. Are there substitutes available? I did read somewhere a long time ago that there was a vegetarian type lipase, but I cannot find it anywhere for the life of me. I think somebody was trying to pull the wool over my eyes. Unfortunately, lipase is a pre-gastric enzyme. I believe it's from the back of the tongue of the animal um, and is only extracted um, upon slaughter of the, cow, the calf, lamb, sheep. Um, lamb, go a kid. Um, uh, there are no substitutes except for using raw milk. That's the substitute. Robert. Oh, Robert Wiley. Nice to see you from Tasmania. Lovely to see you. Um, Obiad says, hey, buddy, I want to learn cheese making. We'll go to the channel, mate. Lots of cheese making tips there. It's all fabulous. Um, Peachy Poo. Uh, hi, Gavin. Tried to make an acidero last week, but it ended up as halloumi. Curds didn't stretch at all, and it didn't melt in a big curd mass. Was it the pH? Usually it is. Um, and I found that before. If they don't stretch at all, then... Um, oh, got a super chat. Thank you very much, Brendan. Appreciate it. Um, uh, sorry, Julia. Uh, Julie Brennan. Um, sorry, no problems at all. Uh, thank you so much for that. And back to the question, if I can find it. I'm so far behind. Um, yes, so curds, 
stretch between 5.3 and 5 pH. Any higher, they won't stretch. Any lower, they crumble. Um, and they don't stretch at all. Um, but uh, nice save, though, by turning them into halloumi. Um, that's what I think it may have been. Uh, Lewis says, hey, Gavin, may Bill pay easy recently, but didn't cut the curds properly. The cheese is not very firm, and it looks like queso fresco. Do you think it will have an effect on the flavour? Cheers. Probably not the flavour, but as you mature it in the fridge, it may start to flatten if you haven't um, cut the curds small enough um, and it's not very firm. I find that tends to happen. Certainly happened when I made, uh, what's a good one? A halloumi. Oh, no, not halloumi. Sorry, havati. When I made havati, um, I didn't expel enough whey during the cheesemaking process and it tended to flatten a lot. Um, but it tasted amazing. It was beautiful cheese, but uh, yeah. Okay, Matt says, have I ever made a cheese that I didn't like and won't bother to make again? Uh, yep. There's one, and it was St. Marcelin, which is a mould-ripened white cheese. I think I ripened it too much. That was my problem. Uh, and when I tasted it, oh, the go to the taste test video. Oh, you'll see the faces. Um, I wouldn't bother to do that again. It was too fiddly anyway especially when I had to put it in those little crocs as well, little clay crocs. Um, I think it's probably eaten a lot fresher than what I made it. Um, okay, Grant says, how do I maintain the humidity in my cheese cave? Good question. I don't. I don't maintain the humidity in the cheese fridge. I let the maturation boxes do the work for me. Um, so that's where the humidity is increased in the maturation boxes. Uh, not the cheese cave itself. You can buy humidifiers. Uh, they are available on Amazon and that sort of thing. Um, but I tend to find, I did try that once, and um, not a humidifier, I put a, a big pot of water with lots of sponges in it, and the humidity got up to about 80%, which was fine, but I found that mould started growing on all the surfaces in the fridge, and that was kind of the last thing I wanted. So I stuck to ripening boxes. That seems to work all right. Uh, L. Solrak says, have you ever used white wine to make cheese instead of red? Have I used it? No, um, I haven't. I did make a, um, I can't even remember the name of it now, a cheese soaked in wine, something vino, Cabra El Vino, something like that. And that's with red wine uh, to make the 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 coat of it red. I think I've still got some of that in the, in the kitchen fridge normally, vacuum packed. Uh, white wine won't do anything for you, I don't think. So. All right. Uh, JW says, can you use lemon juice as a source of citric acid in quick mozzarella? Uh, you can, but how are you going to measure the exact amount of acidity? You'd have to use, add the lemon juice, then check the pH with pH strips or a pH meter and add a little bit at a time. So that's what I'd do. Um, so you probably could. Spartan Mexico, do you ripen the Munster cheese in the cheese cave or out in the open? Uh, definitely in a ripening box in the cheese cave. Jordan, uh, it's our agency. If you answered my question about the... It's our agency. If you answered my question about homogenized and pasteurized milk. I thought I did. Hmm? Uh, I'll move on. Um, Stephen says, what kind of cheese would I make to impress this girl I have a crush on? Is there a romantic or aphrodisiac type of cheese? Now, that is, a, that is the best question I've had all day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Find out secretly what the girl's favorite cheese is and then make it. There you go. Impress her for years. You'll even end up marrying her. <laughs> uh, I can't think of anything else more that would impress her. There you go. Uh, Jacob says, is it dangerous making cheese? If you don't follow any sanitization, then yes, it can be dangerous. If you've got, uh, if you don't wash your hands, yes, it can be dangerous. You can introduce E. coli 
into the cheese. So make sure that the basic sanitation, you boil all your equipment, all the stainless steel stuff, you either use a bleach bath or idafor or vinegar to spray all your plastic equipment. Um, never be lax on sanitation ever because that'll be a surefire way of getting sick, getting your friends sick, getting your loved ones sick. So always make sure you sanitize up front. I always do that at the start of a cheese making session. Even the cheesecloths get boiled. Um, so make sure it kills off any bacteria or any molds or any yeasts that can um, upset the human body. There you go. Good question though, Jacob. Thank you very much. Kevin, I've never heard of mint in halloumi. Can you use other herbs in it as well? Ooh, those Cypriots would get upset if you did. Um, mint is typically used in halloumi. However... However, good question, Kevin, because um, I've actually got, here in Australia, they started making some weird and wonderful types of halloumi. Uh, they've got a basil-infused halloumi. I haven't opened it yet. And they've got a sun-dried tomato-infused halloumi. So traditionally, no, they wouldn't be halloumi. They'd be something else. But I'm going to eat them anyway. And uh, I've got the packets in the fridge. Um... Lego who? Hiya, Gavin. Hi, Lego. Um, Kevin says, can you make part skim or pizza mozzarella? Can you make part skim or pizza mozzarella? Uh, yeah, if you use skim milk, you just lower the yield. That's all that does. Uh, pizza mozzarella. Um, all you do is make traditional mozzarella, which I've done before. There's a video for it. Uh, and uh, let that sit for a day or two air dry, and then you'll get a firmer rind, and then you'll be able to grate it, no problems at all. Um, ZX, ZWX98 says, have you ever made nettle cheese? No, I haven't. Um, but it sounds interesting. Let's have a look. See if I can find something. Okay. Uh Right, I'm so far behind. Scored five litres of raw goat's milk last week. Oh, this is Agar. Uh, two small goat flowery blues in progress. And a Garoxta. Interesting. Um, yeah, so, don't know. I don't know what the Garoxta is, but that sounds interesting. Um, Josh says um, something in Spanish there. I would like some recipe to do if you could put the recipe submitted. Thank you. Huh? Uh, now, the recipes are in the books. Um, if you purchase the books, that's what I do. Um, recipes, I get the ingredients in the description of the video and you just have to follow the recipe along. Sorry about that. Um Zachary says, hi, Gavin. First time watching the live stream. Welcome on board, Zachary. I started watching your videos a few weeks ago, wondering how difficult it was to get started. Uh, thanks for all you do. It is easy to get started. You can make some of the most basic cheeses in your own home with the equipment you've got at home. Um, you don't need anything special. Citric acid, maybe lemon juice, a bit of yogurt, um, some buttermilk. Uh, and you can make a myriad of cheeses. Um, just go to the channel and there's a playlist called Start Here and uh, you'll be able to make those cheeses at home without too much trouble. Um, Aga says, last week uh, I did a week of experiments making Ruhr Oast here using a Dane as the guinea pig. Got there but without buttermilk, which is part of the real recipe. Oh, okay. Basically follow your cream cheese video. Then smoke the cheese over burning hay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, Crypty says, Hi, Gavin. Would you ever try wrapped cheese in fig leaves? I heard this is an option for camembert. I've heard that too. Um, I've heard vine leaves more so than, say, fig leaves. Uh, however, even fig sap can be used to coagulate milk. Not that I've tried, though. Um, but uh, yeah, the sap of a fig tree coagulates milk. I, I haven't heard of fig leaves being wrapped in for camembert. Craig says, hi, Gavin. Good to see you back. Thanks, Craig. When 
you make Stilton cheese, do you rub the cheese once the cheese starts to grow a bloom of blue mould on the outside and then poke holes in it? Uh, yes. So um, because you have a lot of gaps usually, um, once the blue starts to go, I seal those up. I just get a knife and I just kind of like, like spreading butter and you're closing all the gaps off once you've got a bit of blue mould in there and then pierce it all as many times as you can. Um, DRT Maverick, hey Gavin, g'day DRT. Um, Wendy says, sorry Gavin, rind cheese. Um, I'd have to go way back, Wendy, to find out the full question. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, uh, oh, instead of fine cheese, rind cheese. <laughs> right. Um, Patrick says, if I'm at a small dinner party and everybody is just hanging around after I put your videos on, <laughs> everybody is so intense, instantly into cheese making. That's fabulous. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick, for spreading the word. More people should do that. Dinner parties. I'm, I'm the host. I'm there. DRT Maverick, what's a good recipe for a cheddar gouda or gouda? Um, I've made a few wash rind cheeses, but one to do a wine-soaked gouda cheese next, similar to a Bella Vitano. Well, just make a gouda and wine soak it. That's what I'd do. Give that a go. Can't be anything wrong with it. Um, so once you've taken the gouda out of the brine, uh, then let it air dry for, say, 12 hours, just so it's not moist to touch. And then pop it in your wine uh, for 12 hours, then take it out, let it air dry again. Pop it in the wine again for another 12 hours, 12 to 24, actually. Uh, and let it air dry and then either create a natural rind, uh, put it in a ripening box or um, vacuum pack it or wax it. And that's the way I'd do it. Um, time for illumination. Does, and g'day mate, um, does using cloth bound maturation versus waxing maturation affect the cheese's texture slash taste? I'm told that it does because the... Cloth banding lets more, it lets air in. Uh, it's more breathable than both wax and obviously plastic um, vacuum packing. And it does, it actually makes the cheese um, a little bit less crumbly, so I've been told. I don't have any evidence at all. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay, um, Zane says, Gavin, my bell paisi. What has a week let for ripening is starting to get yellow spots on it, also a bit of blue and fuzzy mould on it. Um, uh, is it okay? I've been brining it twice a week. I'm sad. Is it okay? Yes, it's fine. Um, those, um, you'll get brown spots, yellow spots. Uh, that's about it, really. Um, and may, maybe blue mould, but that's okay. Just wipe it off with a simple brine solution until it's mature. And then it'll be no issue. You'll be able to eat it and love it. There's Helen Gamer says, hello from Italy. What is the hot provolone? Because in Italy, not found hot provolone. I don't know what you mean. Hot provolone? No, don't have any of that there. Hot provolone as in pecant. Provolone pecante. Um, there, it is in Italy because I bought some from there. Um, provolone pecante is... Uh, one of the versions, the other version is provolone uh, dulce, which is young or fresh. Uh, so the longer age provolone is aged for up to a year uh, and it tastes amazing. Um, Wilma Charlie 83, hi Gavin. What about putting holes in a cheese like you would a Stilton then soaking it in red wine? Would that affect the cheese or ruin it? Um, no, nah, it wouldn't ruin it. Um, I've actually done it on the very first um, wine-soaked cheese I ever made, and I got little lines like blue veins into the cheese. You only get a little bit of that, and mould doesn't go in there unless you get a mould coating on the cheese while you're ripening it. So, um, yeah, it won't ruin it. It'll just put a little bit more wine into the centre of the cheese. Um, Spark Mexico, have I ever done Swiss cheese? Yep, I have. Two varieties so emmental is a video on that 
And then there's a Norwegian twist on a Swiss cheese, which is called Jarlsberg, uh, which tastes very similar to some of the holy Swiss cheeses that are out there. So check that out. Um, got another one here. Um, trying to find it. Oh, I'm so far behind. Uh, sorry, hang on, I've lost myself. Uh, Cheddar Gouda done that. All right. Uh, Swiss. Uh, translator, if you could put videos, substitute. No, don't understand what you're saying, Joshua. Sorry about that. The Google Translator is not working properly. Um, Juan says, uh, old Gouda on toast, definitely. Um, old Amsterdam is a style of old Gouda or Gouda, and it tastes amazing. Um, when am I coming to Canada, says Kevin. Oh, maybe a while yet, mate, until I'm fully retired proper. Uh, Tammy says I'm making halloumi tonight. And there's Julie's super chat. <laughs> I am way behind. But thanks again, Julie. Appreciate it. Anybody else want to make a super chat? There's the button down there, little dollar sign. It's all good. Only got 10 minutes to go. Oh, nine minutes to go. Goodness me. How am I going to get through all these? Um, hello from... No, I've done that one. Uh, Juan said, I've just made stingy nettle cheese. After seven weeks, it has a nice developed flavour and subtle nettle flavour. It reminded me of my youth. Lived near a dairy farm that made it. Well, I've certainly got enough stinging nettles growing in my um, backyard. That's a good suggestion, Juan. And thanks for answering uh, ZWX98's question. A man all says, hi, Gavin, I made farmhouse cheddar. When I cut it, it was very weak. What happens that? Very weak in what way? Um, weak as in flavour. If you need more flavour, age it longer. Uh, if it was weak as in it was crumbly, then you may have stirred too much during the cheese making process. Um, that's all I can think of. Uh, Italian Gamer says hello from Italy. I've already done that about three times. Um, one says, based it on Gavin's Gouda recipe. Thanks, Juan. Um, L. Solrak, as a follow up to the earlier question, would what would the effects be of using port, fortified wine, high sugar can content versus red wine on the cheese making process? Uh, none. I've seen port infused cheese before and it tastes amazing. Uh, the higher sugar content does seep into the curd a little bit, and that's okay. It doesn't wreck the um, the cheese making process. Um, Robert says, "Hello, have you used a umai bag? What the heck is that?" Uh, okay, it's for making custom dried aged steaks. Umai bag, I think you might mean a vacuum packing. Yes, we do. There we go. And then Kim, well done. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, how long do most of these most of these cheeses last? Not long around here, I'm telling you, because I eat them all. Um, does Kim like hard or soft? Well, I'll have to let her answer that. Um, Manuel, what is the right... What is... Oh, sorry. Is it right when I put cheese in a box with a, with a towel to keep the high, humidity high? No, that's perfect. Um, and I think I answered the uh, ageing bags, ageing, drying, curing. Only when they're plastic ones, I think. I'm not sure what the rest. I haven't looked, researched. Aga said, found Gax Satora on a cheese forum. Some guys in Catalonia restarted its production, washed rind hard goat's cheese. Nice. I like goat's cheese. Hang on. See if I can find it. Right, write it down. Um, Juan sends, when making nettle cheese, use the Gouda recipe. Uh, just use freshly cut, washed, then dried against mould. Uh, fresh leaf, something you'd like. Yes, it would be nice. Um Kim's answering questions. Uh, let's hear what Gavin thinks about your cheese taste. She loves all my cheese, which is fantastic. Um, 
My favourite cheese, done that one. Uh, how long can you keep cheese in alcohol before the alcohol will turn into vinegar? Uh, depends on how much air you let get into the vin into the alcohol. Uh, Craig says, if air drying cheddar for five days make a big difference in texture? Not really. Uh, be about the same. Just uh, to dry, makes a, a firmer rind before you cloth band it or wax it. Uh, transport says, hello. Hello, transport. Um, is Kim is probably going to be giving me the wind up in a minute. Um, I have only 10 minutes to go. That's less than 10 minutes now. Five. That's how far behind I am. Um, DRT Maverick, thanks for the tips on wine soaking. I will send you a super chat next week. Found my Google Play account has been dis disabled because I need to verify it. Oh, that's crazy. Um, I did the same thing with my, um, uh, Oh, what was it? My Apple account, whatever they call it. Um, same thing happened. Uh, Manuel, what is the main culture for cheese? If I only buy this from your website and other materials I buy from another, can I follow your video? Yes, you can. And well, actually, any mesophilic starter culture will get you going on most of the cheeses other than the ones that call for thermophilic, Manuel. Um, I don't care. I don't mind. I care, but I don't mind if you buy them from other places. It's certainly not obligated if you watch my videos. You can do anything you like. It's a free world, which is the best part of it. Um, uh, Kath Katerina Kirk, hello. Lisa, hi, Gavin. You helped me out yesterday with my Leodama. I unwaxed it, dried it a little overnight. I noticed it has two cracks on the size. Then I went ahead and rewaxed. Is my cheese doomed? No, it'll be fine. Be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, once you... Um, uh, take, once it's developed, it'll be fine. Mine's actually still sitting on the shelf, and I have had, as far as I can tell, zero um, CO2 production, and that is a sad. So I'm going to do the taste video for that this week sometime, pop it up next week. Um, but I'm I don't have high hopes for eyes in my um, in my uh, Leodama slash uh, Marsden. Okay. Uh, we heard, yes. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to skip ahead. Kim's giving me the wind up. It's time to go, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for a wonderful show. Without your wonderful questions, I would not be able to have the show and have all these wonderful answers and stuff like that. Um, if you if you want to pick up items from our shop, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. You can support me over at Patreon. Kim's popped those links into the show notes there into the chat um, and merch link uh, at Teespring. You can pick up T-shirts like this or mugs like this, um, anything cheesy. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much um, for coming along again. And hopefully everything health-wise being okay, we'll have a uh, another show next week. So thanks very much, one and all, for coming along. Uh, appreciate you spending an hour with me every week um, and having a great time. Well, I am anyway. I hope you are. I really do. Anyway, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, have a wonderful, cheesy week. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Thanks, Paul.